Welcome to the AP Physics Workbook Solution. Here we have Unit 5, Momentum. The section is 5.D, Change in Momentum. The scenario, a 10 kilogram box initially at rest moves along a smooth horizontal surface. A horizontal force is applied to that box. The magnitude of that force changes as a function of time as shown. Take the positive direction to be in the right. Here we are looking for the impulse. The impulse is the change in momentum. If you look at the graph, the force and time. We can see that impulse is equal to force times time. So all we are going to do, it looks for the area under the graph. We are going to, for part A, you're going to rank the impulse of the situation. So again, you're going to look for the area under the graph. So I'm going to zoom in so we could take a look. From 0 to 2 seconds, I'm going to grab that from 0 to 2 seconds. This is how it looks like. And we are going to fill it in because it represents the area. That is the area for 0 to 2 seconds. Then we're going to have 2 to 4 seconds as this one. And I'm going to fill that in to represent that. Okay, let me grab this. Should cut off, yep. Okay. Then I'm gonna do that for four, uh, four through six, four through six. Is it four through six? Yes, so four through six. So that looks like a weird looking one. I'm going to fill that in. Then I'm going to have 6 through 8. So 6 through 8, that is smaller. And then finally 8 through 8 through 8, 8 through 10. Okay, some of you are wondering, hey, it looks like it's in the negative direction. You're looking for the area. Area has no negatives. All right, now you can just rank it based on this. Well, you could just rearrange the graph. Okay, it should look like B should be, uh, B should be greater. Okay, so B should be greater. All right, then it goes from as the largest. So let me make a little bit more room here. All right, so I'm going to rank this here from smallest to greatest. So B has the most. Then you're going to have C, which is right there. And then you're going to have, let's say, A, because that looks a little bit bigger. And D and E are going to be the same. All right, so make sure you do the less than symbols to indicate that. Okay, B is greater than C, which is greater than A, D and E are the same. There you go. That's from greatest to least. Now you're just going to write a couple of sentences explaining that. I's, I, which is impulse, is equal to force times delta T. Impulse is equal to the area under the force versus time graph. The larger the area, the greater the magnitude of the impulse. Here's part C. You are now going to re-represent the data given in the force versus time graph in part A as momentum versus time graph for the same box. Identify the equation that relates force and momentum. Force times delta T is equal to delta P, which is the change in momentum. How can momentum be found from a force versus time graph? I wrote that the change in momentum is equal to the area under the force versus time graph. Okay. Remember, each time that they say momentum, you could always, um, change in momentum. It's the same thing as impulse. All right. So. Plot the momentum as a function of time, making a table as you need for this case. Okay, and it will change. All right, I'm going to give you the values. Here's the chart that gives you the values. Now, if you're wondering how to get it, let me show it to you.
okay remember this is total momentum you're looking uh, for the area under the curve so let's take a look at zero zero what is the area here when the time is zero well it's going to be zero zero right this is time and this is going to be the momentum what about when it is at one well it would be this much okay all right and again you can find that math um, this is like a triangle just add it up right so this looks like it's roughly z at one it's uh, 0 0.75 okay because it's not a full box yet at two okay, look at how much it covers so it's two it would be this okay so it's like one two and you had this half and this half so it would be at two seconds it would be this whole thing you would have around three what about when it is at three seconds say so this was three so you add one more two more then three more okay so at three the area would be six same thing here what about at four you're adding what one two three right it's additional to that area which is nine this is at five okay this is at six this is seven this is at eight so blah 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 look at eight at eight the total was around 16.5 what happens as you go to let's say nine do you see how this area which is the opposite in the opposite direction so it's now going to be subtracted okay so this is half of a box so at nine it was at 16. do you see how the momentum will decrease because the force is in the opposite direction that would make sense right if you think about it in terms of uh, a visual aspect of just the arrows notice here it's going forward here it's keep going forward 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 right more forward more forward but here the force is negative okay so here then you have a little bit back so do you see how the net would be shorter? That's why it's 16. Okay, this is how I got these values here. And now I'm going to graph it. I'm going to put these values on the chart. It's not going to be perfect, but. So this is how it would look like. I would like you to see that this is the momentum versus time. Okay, you should see that it goes very slow, 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 slow then this is the constant area then the reason why it decays is because the force is negative okay so there you go that's how it would look like next they are going to ask us to derive we are going to use the calculation here and then we're going to do some deriving it says for each line of calculation explain what mathematically was done you're going to calculate the velocity of the box um, after 10 seconds so let's break this up this is the, the delta p which is change in momentum is equal to mass times delta uh, v which is velocity p can break down into just p final minus p initial and um, this m parentheses because that's delta v what delta v is is um, v final minus v initial okay i would just like i'm just going to label this here becomes this part okay and blue which is delta v was this part okay hopefully you understand the substitution all right now we can just plug in the values my final momentum was 14.5 minus my initial was zero this equals to my mass was 10. i do not know my final velocity and my initial was 10 but it's going to be multiplied to zero so this just goes to zero okay please understand where the 14.5 came from the 14.5 was the momentum at the end okay so look at time t equals to 10 the momentum was 14.5 it was represented here at uh, 10 comma 14.5 okay that's how i got the value here 14.5 now you can let's say we it's for uh, zoom this back in 
so this became zero so this is how it would look like um, distribute this over so this is without the zeros there now to get v alone you just divide by 10 divide by 10 you get a total vf is equal to 1.45 and the units here for velocity is meters over second so the final velocity after 10 seconds is 1.45 okay and there you go those are all your answers for um, 5d which is how change of momentum works